Hello to the chicos and the chicas. Casual players against low rated opponents is back at ya with uh, me playing against Faiz Ahmad, who is uh, 1859 and is presumably from the Arabic Peninsula or somewhere of that region based on the name. And we are entering the fascinating pawn sacrifice variation against the F4 uh, Sicilian, but here he chooses not to hang on to the pawn, which results in a weird scenario because the F4 pawn is now in a bit of a need for defense. So usually they play here G3 and then the develop, uh, they develop the bishop to G2, uh, Fianke towing it. Um, bishop C4 is bold. Now I could take this, I dare say. But parts of me just say, mm, let's just develop first a few dudes before I get too crazy about this. Knight of four castles and then D4. Uh, may have had uh, a bit of a bite to it. I really would like to play g6, but I'm not so sure about d4. Takes, knight takes, and I can't really pin that knight because this guy is hanging. Hmm. At the same time, I'm a bit reluctant to play e6 and block the bishop in. So once again, g6, d4. C D nine D. Maybe Bishop G seven then. And then knight C six B six six B C six is playable, but knight B five could be a problem. Okay, let's just go E six. We are going to come this way and we are going to come this way. That's now the plan of development. If they play d4 now, I can just ignore it and develop. c3. Wow. Hmm, he's very tragical, trying to tempt me to take this d4. Bish d6, knight g5 is not possible. Yeah, the time has come when I need to call this bluff. The ultimate, if you can't see the refutation, then you should take the material applies here. I think this is a clever move. Because now it takes, I can take back with check so the knight doesn't hang. And then I can trade queens. Obviously, this looks very ugly for white. And because if I kept the knight on f4... There is no knight g5. I do not understand this move. <laughs> not the least bit. Because now I can take. If bishop takes, knight takes, and I win the queen. This is very confusing to me. Also, it opened up my bishop's diagonal. So I can block the checks on the e file with bishop e6. Yeah, this is just a terrible blunder. Poor guy missed. Bishop takes h2. That was very unfortunate, but I do believe that here their best move potentially could have been King H1 to move out of this check and then threaten to take me here, against which I probably would have moved the knight somewhere. Yeah, so this was the moment when he realized that uh, the poo hit the fan, but it's too late because now I can bring the knight back. Although know that it's still not hanging, but I like knight f6 because that also shields the f file, so there is no threats there at all now to speak of and that's gonna be the end of it i do wonder if he actually saw the f4 pawn hanging and he regularly kept on sacking it or he blundered it and tried to benefit from it once i took it interesting dilemma yeah he's dead now so we need to check queen is seven is easiest Offering a trade, which he is going to decline by playing queen f3 or queen d3. He's trying to hurt me here, but yeah, it's uh, rather uh, hope chest than anything else. So the idea now is, is, is that if I castle, he wants to take me here. And then there is a mate threat down here. So I still need to be a little bit cautious. But uh, overall, it just fizzled out. I will just play h6, sending the knight back, and then I'm going to castle. The captain eye and the rook moves, no rook threat possible on the e-file. 
So that was easy peasy. In fact, I could already play here 95, triggering further trades, but I just consider castles to be the safest option. Completing development, bring the dudes to the party, and I'm the one calling now the shots whilst having an extra piece, which usually ends in resignation. Renewing the threat. Note how I'm building and bringing out all my pieces. And again, as soon as the pressure is on with this, they blunder. I spoke about it in great detail in my last video when we discussed uh, the weaknesses of sub-1700 players. Okay, let's have a look at uh, other casual endeavors. Oh, underdevelop, 1750. Uh, I like that name. I like that name. All right, so now I'm going to chuck something new at them. I will do the modern. I quite like actually the modern. I do think that players who play the King's Indian as black like myself, they occasionally feel tempted to play the modern or the perk against e4 because of the structure is somewhat similar with the long diagonal bishop and then the ability to bite into the center either via c5 or e5. Okay, so he doesn't care about b5, which is all fine and dandy. So now I need to develop two. If e5, I believe we can just jump in here. Oh, actually, I can also take it, yes. So let's just castle. And if e5, I can take pawn takes, I take the queen, rook takes knight g4, and uh, e5 is feeling the heat a bit. Also note that the knight is now a little bit tricky to bring to c3 because I have got this b5, b4 motif on the ready. Now bishop g5 is a bit weird. I'm not going to lie to you, that is a bit weird. But what to do? Knight d7 with the idea of e5 is stock standard, but knight d7 now allows e5. And I really don't want that. On the other hand, he allowed me to play d5 without any repercussions so I shoot that especially because he doesn't have a knight on c3 so when I take on e4 he can't retake with the knight so he's actually in a bit of a pickle here because if he takes takes then I immediately equalized at least whereas if he doesn't then he's going to lose the bishop which means that I again immediately equalized testament by the way to violating a chess principle for no reason which is knights before bishops. So knight c3, although I said that this move was a bit tricky because of this, it looked playable because b5, bishop back, b4. Uh, yeah, you can't do knight d2. And maybe you needed to play knight d2, perhaps. Ugly, maybe. So now we are going to more than likely end up with a reverse Karlsbad structure where his pawns will be here, here, and here. And then we will have a minority attack incoming. I'm very likely to trade away this bishop for this knight. And the reason behind that is, is because he has got a beautiful square here for that horse. And I really don't want that to happen. That being said, if I play knight c6 now, then he can't move in because this hangs, so it triggers c3. And when I just said that, I realized that in this position I can play the... Oh no, I can't because this is hanging. Oh, bugger. Okay, knight c6 is then the, the name of the game. I wanted to go queen b6 because now that pawn was a little bit feeling funny. Now I could go queen b6, but then queen b3 is a standard operation. Now the b queen on b3 is misplaced, but I can't pull back because then take, take, drop c5. Hmm. Okay, let me think. Yeah, I reckon that we are going to go bishop g4, h3, takes, takes, and then rook b8, b5, b4. That's now the plan. Or if he goes there without pushing this to happen, then I still... Actually, rook b8, bishop f4 is annoying. Okay, let's go a6, b5. Yep, take... Knight takes. So 
So if b5, then knight e5, and again, somewhat awkwardly, I cannot move the queen because takes, takes, and e7 hangs. So the logical problem or logical way to get out of this would be to play e6, but then after knight e5, queen c7, bishop f4. Actually, I don't really like what I'm doing here. I have to say that I don't really like what I'm doing here. I made his plan very easy. I perhaps needed to be a little bit more aggressive here. Maybe queen b6 after all was a move here because if I he takes this, I can take that. And that leads to a very weird pawn structure. What I want to avoid is a knight on e5 and the queen on f3, me being unable to play this. That would uh, be unpleasant. Okay, let's go e6. I want to, I want to connect these pawns, and I also want to make sure that this is no longer a threat. He's gonna play knight e5 now. Whereupon we can play h6. Although it's a little weakening. If I could help it, I would like to avoid that. Now, queen d2 is surprising me a little bit. And uh, mostly because I don't really see that he will have enough pieces to attack me around the king's side if he does this. It's a stock standard operation to trade this bishop off and utilize the weak dark squares, right? But now I feel like I will strike before he does. So bishop h6. Do I have b4? Takes, 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 maybe not. So after here, I might have to play rook b8. Take take, and then b4 is pending, although this guy is on a little bit, but we'll take care of that. Maybe I will play knight e5. Takes, takes, knight d7 is a way to deal with that. Where again, I could claim that I, that he doesn't have enough minor pieces to make this attack work. Maybe knight e5 is still his best. Yeah, that's what I would do if I was white. Because there is a very annoying motif here that you should notice, and that is that after knight e5, if I go queen here, then he has got bishop takes, bishop takes, knight d7, attacking 70 pieces at once. Yeah, I didn't really worry about that. It's difficult to execute, the, uh, or to exploit, rather, the weakness of these dark squares. And my plan here to create a weakness is pretty much on point. B4 is an interesting move here that is traditionally played a fair bit in these structures, which creates a very awkwardly backward haha -ha pawn on uh, C3. But uh, it also allows white to then uh, play against the weak B pawn here. Whereas now it seems to me that we are going to force a weakness without... Uh, any concessions. The only thing I need to look into is rook a6 here. Excuse me. And I think I easily have it covered with rook b6. So this is what we call a minority attack, by the way. I haven't spoken about it in detail. When there is three pawns here against four pawns here, and the push that I just achieved by playing b4 means that no matter how white responds to this, he's going to end up with a pawn weakness. So whether it be me taking, taking, and then that's backward, or whether him taking and then this becomes isolated, either case, uh, it's just uh, not really optimal for uh, white. Now, do I want queen c7, do we trade? I think... Hmm. I don't really want to trade this. Not yet. One more preparatory move. And then either I will take or drop back. No, actually, that's, I think, the most likely outcome. Yeah. And note, by the way, that although technically my pawns are really badly placed because a lot of them are on the opponent's bishop's color, but they have now the effect of basically making this bishop biting into granite. Like, this diagonal is just too f heavily fortified uh, so that white can have a go at it. As a matter of fact... The weakest point of my pawn chain is this, and that is highly unlikely that this bishop can get around to. So he would need to do some softening up maneuvers like so in order to really hurt me. 
now I believe we can we can trade because now it takes knight d7 comes here with a tempo hitting both bit of an illusion that the rook is well placed here actually and maybe he wants to come in here but then again that rook does absolutely nothing now he has got a problem with this pawn if he takes rook takes back and then we have got the target and we also have a protected pass pawn if he pushes past I have knight c5 when the rook is on and when the rook moves I can take the bishop and grab the free pawn free pawn is that what Naka calls the juicer basically any chess piece yeah, we grab the juicer on c4. Do we sound cool when we say that or do we not sound cool when we say that? That's the only question. I go with the not really. Okay, so let's take this dude. And after queen takes, we can decide whether queen or pawn would be the better course of action. And I dare say that it's going to be queen. Because if pawn takes, queen takes, then the heavy piece is penetrating here, coming in here, seem to create a bit of a counterplay. But maybe now the rook ending, after rook here, rook here, rook d4, c3 takes, is uh, problematic. We definitely didn't play this game well, and our opponent did play uh, this game above the level of expectation as far as I'm concerned. So now I want to be a pest, take this and promote that as soon as I can. The check doesn't worry me for the time being because he has nothing here. I carefully calculated rook e6, not. But after takes, takes, king up, check, rook up, there is no more checks. And the rook lift is nothing really serious. h4, h5, h6 is something that we have to seriously reckon with. But h4, queen takes, h5 and then queen d2 is a really awesome move that covers h6 and attacks the rook with a check at the same time so this is where he's now falling apart with his time ticking away but credit to him he's playing aggressive moves and aggression is the way to go and actually what i didn't reckon with here was that after take take he can now take this and i cannot take back now this doesn't work because his rook is hanging with check but uh boy he's turning on the heat i actually missed this rook e3 story here so i have to be extremely careful here matter of fact oh yeah i've got the check check i knew that i had something that i forgot to mention now he's going to block and now i still have to worry a little bit not much just a teeny bit about this h file he's going to pull back and then h4 but this this was a really really great effort by uh, the opponent. This guy is very, very badly underrated at 1750. He is very, very badly underrated. Actually, I'm very curious to see where I went wrong in this game. I will check it after with the engine. Yeah, this is desperation now. Um... Could go check, king somewhere, pawn up, takes, takes, rook takes, and then queen, yeah. So instead of taking, which would have allowed him to blockade, now I just pinned everything. This is pinned and this is pinned, so he can't move. This is an, I could have taken two, by the way, but I want to get a new queen. It's an extremely frustrating spot to be in for white when none of these guys can go anywhere meaningful. Okay, um, let's have a look at this analysis board very, very quickly because I'm curious to see what was going on here. Yeah, this opening was not fine and then the buy me d5 was good, but here we lost track of everything. I played knight c6, that was fine. Bishop g4 is already a bad move here. h6 was desired. What do we do though if they go here? Do we cheese? Chase? Knight e4. Wow. Bishop takes pawn takes knight takes g5. Bishop. Okay. Back here is more human. <gasps> f5. 
Wow, okay, so they have to go back this way. Queen d5, rook here, rook here. Now this is the epitome of computer chess. A very obscure pawn sack for nothing apparent. But now the white army is just so, so badly uncoordinated. It's not even funny. Wow, so none of that. Went into this where we are absolutely crystal clearly far worse. Bishop eight six, as I told you, was something that didn't really worry me, as was the take. I also told you that here b4 was the move I was mostly fearing. Incidentally, the computer doesn't mention it here, it does it here. But he no longer wants to play b4 here, which I find weird. Okay, b4 came, 95. I should have taken it, I didn't. But now the position seems to swing to my favor. That was a point when I thought that we we're doing really well and I was wrong, uh, right about that. So now the take, take. Queen, uh, the computer slightly favors pawn takes. No, now it's even Steven. Okay, queen c2 correct. Actually, I played this correctly oh, by the looks of things. Yes, I have. Okay, so it wasn't really that tragic. Okay, good stuff. Let's go one more. Oh, wait, what did he say there? He said he thanked me for the game and said the first time playing an IM. Okay, okay. I don't like the question mark, dudes. I'm not gonna lie. But if we don't have anything else available, we'll take them. So apparently, here you can unclick rate it. Uh, what? No, 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 no. That's not gonna happen. I'm sorry, Pa, but I'm playing low rated. 2300 is not low rated. How is it? I set it on minus 500. Like, how did I get that guy? I don't get that. Whatever. Okay, he's a bit too high. Cash, cash, cash. No cash. Come on, casuals. Where are you lovely cash people? No! Go away, Keith. I don't want to play with you. Why do I get that guy? I don't get it. Please do not do that. I hate to abort games. Oh, here we go. Okay, question mark, but we'll do it. Actually, let's just check him out first. Oh, that looks somewhat valid. D4. Let's do a D5 opening. Hang on. What well, is something I've never played? Benku. Why don't we try the Benku? I, <laughs> I was about to say 100% guaranteed London garbage coming. Okay, here we go. Here comes the London for the 700th millionth time. Nothing like sitting down to play chess and getting the London instead. And already thinking that's a concern. Usually London players he play C3 or E3. They are programmed to do that. But he's not a, not a hardcore um, London player. He's a thinker. Interesting. So now he wants to hang on to the pawn, I suppose, because why else would you do this? Now, interestingly, if they play his C3, we, we are going to basically play a reverse Slav. But he didn't do that. So now I'm going to play e6 in order to open up the bishop's diagonal and I'm going to regain the pawn immediately. Which could lead us into some interesting IQP structures if he plays c4 at one point, which I know is an absolute sacrilege for um, London players. But like I told you, this guy is not a London player. He actually knows that uh, pawns can be pushed two squares at a time. So um that's cool because this way we actually will have a meaningful game at our hand with an interesting structure to look at matter of fact after takes i should seriously consider knight takes because it's a tempo on the bishop and it also kind of denies knight c3 and so it introduces maybe even some check ideas so what i'm expecting here from him is knight c3 following basic chess fundamentals such as knights out and if d4, ed, knight, d, knight, d, yeah. 
I don't know if I want to go there yet. Actually, we end up a slightly better version version of a um, Queen's Gambit declined here where White took too early on c5 in the bishop f4 variation. This is interesting. d4 takes, knight takes, knight takes, bishop takes. Maybe bishop e2 and e5. I like that stuff. By the way, he plays amazingly well for 1300. Then again, we know that he's not a 1300. I could go queen a5 here, but then I feel after a3, we would actually go back move by move into the um, queen's gambit decline theory. So if I go castles, which is logical, bishop e7. Uh, sorry, bishop e2. Queen e7. Takes rook d8. That would be cool if this bishop were back here, but it's not. No, I, I want to change this game. I want to mess it up a bit. I like this central change. Usually when you can do it, it's it's very good for the side who does it because what it does is that after take, 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 you have got a d4 outpost and you have got a central e5 thrust on the ready. And so you are going to end up with a central pawn versus none. Because the d-pawn is gone, now I'm eliminating the c-pawn too. And although the c-pawn does, c-pawn does cover an important central square, but the pawn itself is not located in the center. Now there is not an awful lot to be thinking about here, which is why I'm somewhat puzzled, because any knight move would be met by a bishop check, which is supremely annoying. So I'm um, not sure what the thinking is all about. But yeah, he's he's forced to take. That's uh, there is nothing. Ah, uh, maybe he's thinking knight b five. Huh? I actually didn't even consider that move. Wow, that is actually a pretty bad blunder by me. So hang on, take 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 knight takes bishop takes knight b five. Uh oh. That is a big uh-oh moment, right? Wow! Did I just blunder a game away? So hang on, knight take, pawn takes, knight takes, knight takes, bishop takes, knight b5. So what happens if I then take b2? Knight c7, check king up. Knight takes, insane complications. Maybe I could have survived that, but boy! That looked ugly, whereas now we just seem like we almost win by force, right? Because there's 94 incoming, this knight is very badly stranded on the side. This is not looking good. Oh, and I have e5 here with the temple. That's super juicy. But maybe irrelevant. If he went back, then I would instantly win. But bishop g5 retains the bishop on this diagonal. So the idea was that after takes, the bishop can take back and defend um, this guy here. So I'm not in a hurry to release this tension because for the time being, I can't see what I can gain out of it. Now, queen a5 is a dirty move because that creates the threat of takes followed by take this. So he probably needs to respond to that by takes. So that if I take, the bishop can take back. And then knight takes. Let's say bishop d3, pawn e5. And bishop d7 will be quite frustrating. So that's a good option, but I feel like we have got more here than that. e5, bishop g5, queen a5. Bish takes, pawn takes. Hmm. Okay, let's go with queen a5. I can't. No, I can't see a better move than that for the time being, at least. I really like the idea of after something like take, take, bishop here to play e5, bishop here, bishop g4 tempo. 
And then I might even castle here. I would really love to do that. We'll see how that exactly plays out. He actually, actually, he has to be accurate. If he plays bishop d3 here, I've got e5, bishop here, e4. Although then bishop f6 is still borderline playable takes. Yeah, no, that wins for us, folks. That wins for us. Okay, so that is a, a way to defend this, I suppose. The problem with this move is that now I go on to the winning rampage of e5, knight, e4. So the problem here is that bishop g5 does still retain the diagonal, but the knight e4 attacks both this dude here and that dude there. So if I had played knight e4 here, then he could have taken here and defending the knight again. It's suboptimal, but it's playable. But after e5, I'm chasing the bishop successfully off of this diagonal, and now knight e4 just wins this and with it the game. I just figured out that if you say with it, with a horrendous Hungarian accent, so you say instead of with it, you say something like with it, it actually sounds like the Indian dude with it. Hmm, interesting. So lesson learned, speak proper English. Hard when you have got a horrendous accent. Um, but yeah, with it is a brilliant player, by the way. I think he also has a YouTube channel. I think. Matter of fact, now just my brain just started going in massive circles. Like, isn't the guy's surname Gujarati? Which I think Gujarat is a part of India. Wow. I clearly didn't have enough sleep because normally things like this didn't, don't occur in my head and then I speak them out loud because it's embarrassing. But now I just did. So, yeah. Okay. Is that is that something that is important now? Absolutely. So it's Gujarat. I thought it was spelled G-U-J-R-A-T-H, but in fact it's G-U-J-A-R-A-T. Okay, so how is Vidit's name? Ah, and his name is G-U-J-R-A-T-H-I. But I swear to God that that has to have some connection, right? Oh, sorry. Back to business. Uh, knight b3 check takes, queen takes, king here. Takes, queen takes, and I would like to win this knight, but I cannot. Okay, let's just put this bishop in his face. I'm too lazy to calculate now. If b4 comes, I will just probably retreat. And then if it takes, I take back, and the knight on d2 guarantees no castling, which is very important for me. But maybe this was just a bit too slack. Knight of free king f1, I didn't see an obvious win. And that was my only double check. Knight b3 takes, queen takes, king f1, knight takes, queen takes. Well, I forgot that I was a piece up already. I should have done that probably. So, yeah, maybe that was a bit slack to go here. b4. Can I do anything cute after that? Something like take the queen would be nice. Yeah, this was a bit silly because the c3 pawn is going to be loose after I go queen, knight takes, pawn takes, something like rook c1. And uh, all of a sudden, it's not that clear. I really would like to sack a queen here. I'm itching for it. And queen takes, queen takes, and then various knight checks. Knight b3 in particular is juicy. And we can pick off this rook, but... Uh, yeah, it's very speculative. We'll just come back, take, take, rook c1, knight e4. Trade queens. Boring, boring, boring. Trade the bishop. I will lose that pawn, but win with the extra piece. It was a bit careless. I think the cleanest way to win would have been here to take, because this would have retained the initiative. Um, so yeah, take b3, check, takes, takes, king force, take, take, the queen takes back, and then just castles of bishop d7, and the knight is terrible, the king is stuck, the position is opening up, compared to that, 
this looks a little bit inferior. Okay, this was a bit of a cheeky, annoying move. I'm not gonna lie, folks. So if I go 94, he can take this. And I don't seem to have a forced win there because after, yeah, queen a5 he can castle. I wanted to set queen a5 takes and then play a cool move, but c2 queen takes, I don't have anything. And if the knight jumps first, yeah, this, this is now, yeah, we're going on a slight tilt here. So if I go knight here, bishop takes, queen here, bishop takes, hurts both of my knights, queen takes here, <laughs> oh boy, what on earth is going on, actually knight here, bishop takes, knight b3 is very interesting, rook a2 here, bishop takes, queen g2, okay, welcome to the most nonsensical chess position of your life. Who would have thought that this is what was going to come up after an absolutely dry, dull, utterly ridiculous London? Well, credit to my opponent, he didn't allow the London. So let's go in here. I think his best move, by the way, here is to take this. And after knight a1, I don't think that those knights are coming out. Yeah, this is a hope chess move, really. I think you should take this. And after knight takes... um, Something needs to take on d2. Bishop takes d2. Oh, but then I can defend the horse. But then he can just castle and attack it and I can't get out. Actually, no. Bishop takes knight takes bishop d2, bishop f5. Oh, but then he can take because the bishop is guarded. Boy, why is chess so complicated? This is this has turned into some real fascinating stuff, which obviously is a direct result of me messing this up real hardcore. Yeah, I think this is the losing move, rook a2, because now I think this is very strong. Bishop takes e3, queen g2, and the rook drops. Haha. -ha. Gotcha, baby. So now he might have to go back in order to cover both of these. And if that's the case, then the knights uh, actually su not only survived, but remain to be a total pain. So he has to take this, but then queen g2, and this rook is not having the time of his life. <laughs> Look at those knights. I mean, how surreal is that? How surreal is that? And the best part of this whole operation is that when you take a pawn on g2 with a queen, almost always the rook is safe on f1. But as a result of me parking a knight in his face for the last 10 moves, this is not an option. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, so maybe rook f1, knight takes... Bishop takes, and I'm still dropping this knight as well. But now his king is a lot more insecure than what it would have been. And besides, I'm not sure if after rook f1, I don't have something cooler than knight takes, which admittedly is a bit mundane when you have got two knights like this. You want to shoot for the stars, right? I'm just one tempo too short. Because after, if the bishop were on h3, then I could go knight f3, check, bishop takes, and that's a mate in two. But again, he played the worst possible response, because now I get to take the rook with a check, and then I can still evac with the knight. So that was terrible. In fact, now after here, I have got bishop h3. Hitting this with one more dude. Yeah, let's go here. Forcing queen e2, only move.
Oh, and after queen here, I'm gonna castle. And if the bishop moves, then I will have bishop takes, queen takes, and rook d1 check. Remember, folks, always castle queen side. Two big lessons from this game. Don't play the London and B, castle queen side. Okay, so castle's here. Connecting the, the big boys and creating a multitude of threats, actually. So if it was my turn again, I could take, take, take in whatever order and then win this piece. But I would also have the threat of knight c1, bishop c1, bishop f1, queen f1, rook d1, when after king takes, we pick off a free queen. So now he's just well and truly dead. In fact, a better way to demonstrate this would be if I didn't have this rook at all. That would be a quite realistic scenario where in this position I could just execute bishop takes f1, queen f1, rook d1, which is what I'm going to do now. Although I have to say that the equally cruel, actually more cruel, knight c1 is available. In fact, in this position, objectively speaking, the best move is by far knight c1. But I would really want to show you this bishop takes, queen takes, rook check, king takes, queen takes motif because it's so nice. Wouldn't be surprised if he went for check, by the way. But then after king here, bishop check, king here, he runs out of checks. And I have mate. So now the check makes this king feel a bit silly because he can't be tagged to the queen anymore. He will have to take or up. Either way, I'm going to win the queen next. King here, queen takes. And that's usually the time when we throw in the towel. Did I have a better win here than that? Oh, yes, I did have a check. Oh, no, I didn't because then king takes. Okay. Never mind. Did I have check here? No. Yeah, rook b2. Let's go back. Now we've got check here, check here, check everywhere. And most importantly, the rook is going to join the fray. Uh, Checkerino. Very tenacious. Let's go with that word, yeah? Let's go with that word. So, let me think. If check, king up. And I wish my queen wasn't there, and then I could go knight d3. Check here doesn't... Oh, check, check. Wow. That is neat stuff. I like that. I really like that. So yeah, king up, knight check wins the bish. If the king goes to a2, then I have got the check here, which is going to restrict him a lot more, because now by pinning the bishop, which he opted not to do, I could have brought the rook in without him having the ability to block off the d file. Now we just pick off this cherry. And now we've got mating two. And that's gonna be the end of it. All right, let's have a quick look at this one too, because I did some embarrassing stuff here. So, um, yep, Ooh. I left the analysis on, as in the analysis mode instead of the playing mode. Okay, so talk here, 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 bishop c5, knight here. Yeah, I was genuinely worried about take, take, knight takes, knight takes, knight b5. This was something that avoided my attention altogether. E5, knight takes, EF4 is probably the best way to bail out. When I'm only narrowly worse, but this was ugly. And apparently this doesn't work. Because of check and then queen B3. Wowzers, man. Check this out. Check Reno and uh, mate on D6. That is beautiful. So the correct move in this position would have been castle. Actually, funnily enough, it's the line that I called, bishop e2 and queen e7. That's the line I called with takes, rook d8, and then take back. Huh. Fascinating. Okay, so d4 was a shocker, as was knight a4. 
And now, did we play right? Of course we didn't. Bugger. I totally missed that after bishop takes queen takes knight e4, the next queen a5 check is going to be deadly. Hmm, that was a bit of a doozy. b3? Yeah, that was a losing move. e d4 was his last hope here. Um, knight e4 or e5 doesn't really matter. Knight e4, bishop d2. Okay, so bishop d2 was the correct way to go and then take this. I wanted to get cute. Bishop takes a3. Get out of town. Wowzers. And if rook takes, we just pick off the rook. <laughs> okay, that's cool. I admittedly missed that one. Okay, that was a doozy. And here. Wow. I gave away all my edge. All of it. So the only move to retain the edge is knight e4. Why did I not play this? I'm a complete clown. Uh, because after takes takes, if bishop takes rook g8 and we have that. Although, hang on a tick. Because if they go there. Oh, this will this will come in. Yeah, because rook takes bishop g3 can cause unpleasant moments. But knight b3 with c2 push is very strong. So I played this and I knew that bishop c3 was the right move. But after knight takes, bishop takes, queen f6 was hoping to find something here, but of course there is nothing here. Matter of fact, I think I would have played something like bishop e6, queen a1 takes, 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 and then either castles of rook d8, I don't know, or rook c8 perhaps, or even b6 to fix this weakness. But the engine actually slightly favors white here. So that was a textbook case of how to throw away a plus eight advantage by being careless as heck. Yeah, that was really, really appalling chess by me. And then uh, hear him uh, playing rook a2 just, yeah, it was really, really bad. Hmm. Wow, so this is, uh, this shouldn't go in the title playing lower rated opponents. It's playing like lower rated opponents because I really did play very poor chess. In fact, in this whole entire recording, I wasn't on top of my game, but hey. Um, even an IM or a GM can't always be, in fact, I never am perfect, but today certainly not. Uh, very interesting learning though, that, uh, here this knight, awkward knight layout could have been exploited beautifully by bishop takes. And then, uh, I had nothing. It's funny. It was hilarious, especially hereabouts. But um, yeah, don't do this at home, folks. So one more time, the, the real cool stuff was that here I needed to take king f1 take and just mop up. That was a biggie. After knight takes here, I should have noticed this. Takes, takes, knight c4, king f1 takes, and I'm a full rook up with nothing left. Okay. Okay. I think we'll call it a day here, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and I will be back with more soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.